if you ever heard, or if you already ever heard, the University of Miami has been going through a, a really crazy scandal right now with former booster, Miami booster, Nevin Shapiro. Uh, great job by Charles Robinson. He's been on top of these uh, investigative stories in college football from USC to this Miami story. I just want to, it was a great read, great article. I'll definitely post the article in the description box just so you guys can read it yourself if you haven't. Uh, I'm gonna definitely just, I'm gonna break down the situation and break down the key points in the article that I think that are really important. And as well as, uh, do I think that Miami should receive the death penalty in this case? In this case, I actually do believe that they, they receive the death penalty. But Nevin Shapiro was actually incarcerated, incarcerated for a Ponzi scheme work that he started that had $930 million, which is a crazy amount of money. How could somebody just scam people out of 90? Nine hundred and thirty million dollars is unbelievable to me, but he said in a, in uh, in a report, reporters told reporters and fellow investigators that most of this money went to the University of Miami's athletic program, mainly basketball and football. Never Shapiro said that he gave at least 72, 72 athletes in basketball and football benefits ranging from cash of uh, prostitutes uh having parties that is had his yachts and million dollar homes jewelry bounties on certain players all expense paid trips for players and or their families um all expense paid uh high high-end miami restaurants and nightclubs strip clubs and all that there was actually a case where one of the football one of the players who who goes unnamed got a prostitute pregnant and Shapiro gave the prostitute money to have an abortion which the player did not know anything about but as I was saying everybody's saying that he's mad and he and he's trying to get back at the university because nobody had his back and this is what he gets for trying to buy friends but I really don't think he was really buying friends he said the, the all, all this stuff is really added up to uh, cost him up to millions of dollars that he which he's had through the Ponzi scheme giving money to players stars stars in the league like uh the late great Sean Taylor uh Antro Roll you got you got guys like um Devin Hester John Beeston Jonathan Vilma Vance Wilfork and, uh, current players that are on the team right now, Ja'Cory Harris, Dyron Dye, uh, Drenus Johnson, Travis Benjamin, uh, Ja'Cory Harris, I think I said his name already, uh, and just also other players that Miami recruiting, like University of Florida re receiver and old lineman Andre DeBose, uh, lineman Matt Patchum, quarterback, uh, US, US, UCF's quarterback, excuse me, Je uh, Jeffrey Godfrey and tight end Orson Charles from that is that uh, enrolled in Georgia. Uh, it all started off it just you know he was telling these players he was known as Little Luke. Nobody knows from before Luther Campbell, Luke, A.K.A. Luke from the Two Live Crew. He was actually one of the players that people usually accused of him being like the uncle of the players and. And he was giving benefits to players back in the late 80s, early 90s. He was giving money to those type. He was giving money to the players back then. And now that he stopped doing it, they had and then Nevin Shapiro started in 2000 to 2008, giving money to those players. And and even through t to 2010, before he got arrested and charged, he was known as Little Luke, basically taking over what Luke started. What Luke started. So. Everybody's been bashing him, telling him that he's doing this, and they denied it. But one person that came out, Tyrone Moss, former running back, he said that him and a couple of guys that he recruited, that that were in his recruiting class, attended the parties, attended the yacht parties, the million man, the million, the million dollar home parties, and they actually each received a thousand dollars each for just attending those parties, and they spent it however they wanted to. Uh, there was also a story. He also said that he gave a basketball player, Daquan Jones, ten thousand dollars just to get a commitment to to come to the university, just to commit, not even sign, just to commit to the school, and and also he gave the the basketball the basketball team fifty thousand dollars 
as a fundraiser donation in 2008 with Coach Frank Heath and Donna Shalala, who was in the picture, who was also the, the president of Miami at the time, that still is the president of, my, of, of the University of Miami. And everybody's saying, oh, the players, the, the players need to be a responsible for this. They need to be held responsible. The players don't need to be, the players need to be held responsible at a certain degree, but their kids at the end. But at the end of the day, people, people need to, the administrative people need to be, um, definitely need to be punished worse than these kids. Because Paul D., for example, who was the, the uh, athletic director at the time when this was going over Nevis Shapiro, he was letting all this slide. He knew about this. Donna Shalala, she knew about this as well when it when she was when she was there when Nevin Shapiro was there. The guy had the guy all pledged two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to have one of the centers, one of the athletic, one of the centers name put in his name, Nevin Shapiro Center. And they knew about this. They knew about this guy. He was a booster for the team. It proves a booster for the program. I mean, they they had to know. Paul D. If anybody doesn't know the story about Paul D. He was actually the chairman of the NCAA Infractions Committee in 2008, where they was going hard at UC, uh, USC, and he came out with the infamous um, line saying that high-profile players uh, deserve high-profile compliance. Now you're kind of looking at it like you're contradicting yourself because you're telling you're, you're going at USC like this, but yet this stuff was going on while you was the AD at Miami at the time. And he came down hard on the University of Miami, and everybody knows thirty games. They got they lost. They can't go to bowl games for three years, or two or three years. They lost thirty scholarships over the next three years, and just to have people like this just say stuff like these players, but you're letting this stuff go on behind your back. In my opinion, Paul D never needs to work in the NCAA again. Donna Shalala should have been fired last week when this story came out, uh, allegedly, allegedly or not. You can look at the picture that she has with Coach Haith, where she's looking at the, she's looking at the check, grinning and smiling. You knew she knew what was going on. Uh, there was other, there was also other staff members of at least ten coaches knew about this. The ones of assistant right now, in Miami, Frank Heath, like I, Coach Frank Heath, like I said, who was a former head coach, now the head coach at Missouri. Um, Aubrey Hill was a wide receiver coach there. Clint Hurt, who was another uh, football coach. These people knew about these, and, I, and I'm not saying that those guys need to lose their jobs, but they need to be punished harder. Like the Jim Trestles, yes, Terrell Pryor was, was doing what he was doing, but why isn't nobody coming down on Jim Trestle? Why isn't nobody coming down on the athletic directors? Why is nobody coming down on, on Mike Garrett, the athletic director for USC? That's who I'm coming with. with. I think I believe that these players need to be the player needs to have a stipend. They need to have some money so you don't have these situations. But getting back on track to this story, uh, there's been talk about do, does Miami receive the death penalty? I think I believe they do need this. You have to start somewhere. They do need the death penalty. Like I said earlier in the video, they need the death penalty. These are one of the premier programs, prominent programs. The NCAA needs to come down. Mike Emmett needs to come down on this, especially if Miami will open up a lot of eyes, a lot of ears around the country, knowing that, oh, they're not playing. Okay, because if you did this to SMU, everybody knows the story with SMU. They got money. They got they got a boat. They got a band. They got um, they got the infractions committee in about the, the early, the mid to early 80s. And they happened again in, in the early, in the late, early to late 90s. And they got the death penalty, and people are talking about they saw the effect. NCAA saw the effect that it had on SMU's program, and they said they'll probably never. That's something they'll never do again. But I think they really need to have to uh, revisit this because this is a prominent program. These guys were getting paid thousands and thousands and thousands of, of dollars. Uh, for instance, Shapiro actually had it was a co-partner of an agency called Sports Access with. Uh, Mike Hugo, who's a who's an NFL agent at the time, now is the commissioner of the UFL, and they gave money to players at the University of Miami to help them steer them to come so they can sign them as an agent. They signed two top players of Miami who became first rounders, John Beeson and Wolf and Vince Wolfork, and reported and allegedly they gave Vince Wolfork fifty thousand dollars in a lump sum just to sign or just to give him a little handshake agreement saying I will sign with you while he was still in school. 
can't you cannot have this type of activity i believe in college football these guys really need to ncaa really needs to come down on miami also if you didn't hear the news it just came out today the university of miami uh ruled 15 players ineligible including jacory harris i think they're using this as the cam newton rule if everybody remembers last year the University of Auburn really ruled Cam Newton academically, uh, ruled him ineligible Friday before the SEC championship game, that Thursday or Friday, and all of a sudden, the NCAA reinstated him. So this is basically what Miami's trying to do. They're, they're telling that these guys they're ruled ineligible so the NCAA can come and tell them, you know what, they're reinstated so they don't feel the effects of just in case something does go down. These players were, these players were ruled ineligible ineligible but the NCAA said you know what we're going to reinstate them and that's what Miami's trying to do right now but I really believe Miami should receive a death penalty on this one you got to set you got to set a standard you gave USC for two players Reggie Bush and OJ Mayo you gave you you made them take back every national championship they won took back all the records that they had Reggie Bush you gave back the Heisman for two players you have 70 at least 72 athletes that were named and show what they was received and have photographs, have statements, you have bank statements, you have documents proving that these players really took this and Shapiro really did this. So if you're going to give USC what you gave USC for two players, Miami needs to receive the death penalty. I don't want to see it, but you really need to put a foot down the NCAA and show these top programs, these Floridas, these Alabamas, these Texases, these Oklahomas, these Michigans that you're not playing. And you guys need to run clean programs or you guys are going to get hit seriously hard with this. No matter who you are, no matter if you're Boise State, no matter if you're, you're, you're USF, UCF, FIU, if you're one of these lower programs, you're going to feel punishment for doing something that is against the NCAA bylaws. So let me know what you guys think about this. Leave your description, leave your comments. At the bottom, this is going to be something that's really going to be talked about a lot because there's a lot of Miami fans, especially that time when they was winning national championships. The U, they've always had that fan base, especially in Miami, especially in, in, in Florida a lot. A lot of kids that grew up around that time loved and worshipped the University of Miami. So just uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Also, I believe that if they do give Miami the death penalty, the teams that you think that were that would actually benefit from this recruiting wise is not the team that you really think. You'll think a team like Florida, Florida State, or um, UCF or, or USF would benefit, but I think Louisville would because Coach Strong has really planted his foot in in that South that South Miami I say South Florida, Miami Dade County, Broward, starting to get into Palm Beach County. He's starting to get those players from those kind of schools, so you give Miami the death penalty, and you got to give these kids other options to go. Charlie Strong is in there already building up relationships with these coaches and these and these families and these players. So I think my the one team that would benefit from it, in my opinion, would be Louisville. Let me know what you guys think about this. Like I said again, thanks for the support of watching my videos, uh, giving me feedback.